Good evening. Uh, welcome to the fourth ever Pasnia Sec Realm Assembly, hosted live on our own Jitsi server, the first of many pieces uh, in this overarching Second Realm infrastructure. Uh, if you're new to the Free Republic, I'm just checking to make sure everything's yep good. Uh, if you're new to the Free Republic, Pasnia is the first free country in existence right now, a decentralized country spanning worldwide jurisdictions. Our goal is to create a parallel network founded upon the principles of peace, truth, and volunteerism, and uh, we're already doing it. These here are our Second Realm Assemblies, where we crowdsource the topic of liberation. Uh, to ensure you never miss a post, or, uh, uh, hey Josiah, would you mind uh, muting just for a moment here? Appreciate it, man. Um, to ensure you never miss a post or a uh, meeting, subscribe to the Vani Podcast on your favorite podcatcher, and uh, follow on Odyssey. Uh, it's vanipodcast.com forward slash odyssey1. Uh, it's a short link that'll take you there. Uh, you can also begin or continue uh, building your reputation in the Second Realm. Uh, by joining our Pasnia Committee Correspondence on Telegram. Uh, that's t.me forward slash Pasnia Chat. Uh, further, become a more concrete part of our efforts, uh, our vision, and uh, reap the benefits of such a second realm uh, parallel network, the most important, important of which is uh, that we get to live these principles of peace, truth, and non-coercion in the here and now, uh, in physical space and time, despite the, predict the predictable nature uh, and behavior of the servile society. Uh, just visit paznia.com, that's P-A-Z-N-I-A.com, peruse the site, and uh, become a stakeholder today. Uh, all of the details are available there on the site, but please do email me, uh, coordinator at paznia.com, uh, if I can be of any assistance. Today I'm pleased to be joined by a panel of self-liberators uh, to cover two primary uh, items. First off, I want to go deeper into the self-hosted Jetsy server potentialities, uh, now that I'm beginning to understand how powerful the use of VPSs could be uh, as part of our infrastructure. Uh, there's also the ongoing project and income for the developers and maintainers of such an efforts. Uh, you know, another potential way to, you know, for folks to you know get out of the first realm, uh, at least you know financially. So that's it's great. Uh, secondly, along a similar line of thought, we need to have a focused conversation on uh, ways to fund Department of Technology projects. Uh, I've got a lot of ideas and inspiration, uh, but would love to open up the floor and uh, see what we can come up with together. Uh, then once we conclude these two discussions, uh, the floor is open for any other topics, uh, questions, etc. I'm going to work in Josiah and the, the uh, Pasnia Bitcoin General Fund, and then Trent's also here. Um, I want to make sure to give him a chance to uh, you know talk a little bit more about his project and what, and what he's working on. And I think it might actually tie in with the second thing we're going to talk about. So um, it's fantastic. Uh, then uh, yeah, once we conclude those you know those I guess those conversations, anything is you know anything is uh, open and welcome. So um, let's get on with it, um, Josiah. Welcome to the assembly, brother. Um, please do unmute now, and um, yeah, I guess uh, tell us, uh, you know, fill us in. I'll put uh, for the for the viewers. I guess I'll mention before I turn it over to you. Uh, for the viewers on Fascist Super Odyssey, um, you'll be able to see the QR codes he's mentioning or he talks about uh, here. So if you want to donate to the fund, but uh, Josiah, take it away, brother. Yeah, sure. So um, there's, no, I mean, there's not a lot in the way of updates, but. I do want to just kind of mention the uh, the fund here, and let me see if I can. I'll just kind of bring it up for my own own reference. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't. I think you have QR there. It's also um, available. There's like a, uh, a samurai um, pay name that's available for donation and everything. And I think uh, it's just. I think it's just really been going going really well. I think in terms of uh, being able to pay out to people that need it, especially in the community. Uh, I think recently, um, you know, I I think a lot of people know Silas here. Like he, that's been that's been able to help him like uh, repair like his van. Like there were some really costly repairs that he had to make there. Um, and so that's kind of what the fund is for. It's just so like, you know, people just pay into it when they get a little bit extra BTC or something like that. Uh, just go ahead and throw it in there. And then, um, you know, it pays out to people that, you know, that really are in a bind or something like that. Um, we also uh, have contributed to defense funds um, for, you know, political prisoners um, including Ro Roman, who I believe uh, was really um, kind of just, it's kind of an unfortunate situation. If you have a chance, like, listen to the podcast, I think that uh, Rayo has up there. But we basically 
were able to donate a little bit to the legal fund for Roman, um, who uh, really, I think, um, I guess uh, the term would be process prosecutorial federal harassment would be the <laughs> would be the <laughs> correct term for what he's going through um and then uh you know anything anything else another example would just be um we had been trying to them to uh sort of like incentivize second realm activity through there um but uh, it's still uh, relatively in its infancy, so it's like a smaller fund, and um, basically could uh, could use some donations. Um, but the you know the price uh, increased price recently has has definitely helped with uh, being able to get get some money to people, uh, some crypto out there to uh, for like various homesteading projects. Um, like I said, the legal defense fund. Um, I think there was even like a uh, uh, a little bit um, thrown to like a whistleblower fund. Um, so that's uh, that's pretty much um, pretty much it. There, there's a couple QRs there that you can use to just kind of scan um, if you if you want to, or you could just visit the Paznia.com. Um, I think it's like on the Paznia Bitcoin department. Yep, Paznia.com forward slash Bitcoin, I think. Um, we'll get you all things Paznia Bitcoin related. Um, but yeah, amazing. Um, thank you, Josiah. Thank you. Um, yeah, that's, that's, it's, a, it's, an amazing, it's an amazing model. And um, I think, uh, you know, another topic for, you know, not a meeting of our Department of Technology, but there's this account I follow on Twitter called CrowdHealth. And they've got a normal fiat version and also a Bitcoin version, and it's uh, it's it's not I guess it's it's a new mo a new new way of healthcare. And you pay there's a, I guess there's a um, there's a monthly fee which isn't that much for you know a family. And then basically um, it's uh, if someone has a procedure you know something coming up, then people basically crowd you know it's crowdsourced. And a lot of times it's like um, and, and since it's not actually insurance. Um, you know, health insurance is obviously one of the biggest scams out there now. Um, but like the cash price is usually like a tenth of the price. So if like they, they actually negotiate with, um, you know, with the, you know, with the Babylon pharmaceuticals or whoever you're working with. Um, and, um, and that's, that's just their model. I guess I'm just saying like, um, but something like that for, for the second realm, um, like I know we've got the passing a general Bitcoin fund, um, but you know, as per the title, um, you know, th you know, going off of the, the general fund, um, of the first realm, which is just a slush fund for whatever the hell. Um, you know, first from you know politicians yeah. <laughs> want want to use, um, maybe maybe a more directed one um, for folks who want to you know just more purely uh, support through you know the the more serious things like, um, you know like health, um, or I guess emergencies like um, you know you know the, the car repairs you know that that's you know for people's livelihoods that's also big too so. Um, but yeah, I I don't know just some, something I've been thinking about. Um, you know not not obviously a huge, um, you know maybe not immediately of importance right now, but something um, something down the road. Um, once the, the network grows larger, but, um, I guess that's, that's all I have to say. Anything else, brother? No, th that was it. I think, um, you, we did kind of briefly mention the infrastructure infrastructure thing or whatever. Um, and so maybe just kind of thinking along those lines or like kind of using the same logic to ha establish some kind of fun for, for different uses. Like you said, the health, uh, maybe like a technology one would be uh, would be appropriate. Um, mm -hmm. I guess like it doesn't even need to really be uh, you know Bitcoin or anything. It could be um, labor or time or something yeah. like that. I think that was much the last call. So yeah, yeah. But that's about it. <laughs> certainly, certainly. Um, well, yeah. Thank you, Josiah. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and uh, jump forward to um, I guess the the first big topic, um, I guess the the bigger the bigger topic for this evening, um, and that's something we talked about a little bit uh, with the self-hosted Jitsi server potentialities, um, and it's actually pretty good timing, um, or I guess it could have been better timing if I had more time to you know you know research and develop it in the meantime. But um, anyway, um, Jamin has been busy, and uh, he got me um, one of my, or I guess he got me. A, a public and a private, or I guess basically two and two nodals, two old two old nodals. Um, the video viewers can see them. Big uh, Rock sixty four devices, and uh, they've got Nextcloud on them. And I was able to get the private one. Um, you know, set up installation went well, 
and um, got to, um, you know, try the one-click install for Jitsi and a few other things. Um, overall, you know, just an hour or two, um, you know, on it so far. But, um, you know, it really got me thinking about uh, the 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 passing a Jitsi server because we've got all we've got the option of the VPSs, which you know, I'll talk about more that I I found out in the meantime since our last conversation. But the ease of how quick it is to speed up a, a Jitsi server on um, a Nextcloud node, um, it's super easy, uh, super quick. So I don't know, it's got me thinking. Um, it's really really got me thinking. But uh, I guess I can give you give you guys an overall. Um, I guess uh, an idea, and I, I kind of mentioned it last time, but I'll, 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 I'll briefly go over it again. But just imagine someone visits the website. I'm not going to mention the website now because, um, I guess, yeah. Anyway, not going to, I don't want people to dox the website right now. Uh, but anyway, that you go to this website, um, the one we're, we're on right now, actually. And, um, basically, um, yeah, person visits sites, they make a 299 or whatever cost, what we determine that to be, zero confirmation Bitcoin transaction. Something small, just so it's basically a spam prevention thing. You pay for it and you can have the room for as long as you want to. So it's not like um, it's not like a, a time bit. You don't got like 30 minutes like Zoom, you know, restricts you for free or whatever. So I know it's 299. But um, so yeah, person visits 299, zero confirmation Bitcoin transaction. A uh, random meeting link is generated and sent um, to them and or, you know, the participants that want to um, be involved in the call. And, uh, I think like I've, I've mentioned a couple of times, 50% of the income could go to, uh, would go to maintenance and costs. I um, mean, just upholding, you know, the VPSs or whatever infrastructure costs there are. And then the other 50% is available to pay developers, um, you know, an ongoing project, um, and second round Bitcoin. So there's a couple other things that I'll mention, and then I want to open up the floor and just kind of going to lay out a bunch of, throw out a bunch of shit here and you guys can pick up what, what sounds good. But uh, I was doing some research on Bitcoin full nodes and VPSs, and uh, there was actually a long list and, you know, lots of different countries. Um, and some of them were more maybe you could do a Bitcoin full node. Um, others were, yes, you definitely can. Um, so I found one, I don't remember what country it was, some European country, and it was twelve ninety nine, and they give you like a whole Ubuntu install. And um, it's, it's way m more than enough capability to run a Bitcoin full node. So you could probably do a Bitcoin full node and even maybe a Jitsi server on that one for twelve ninety nine a month. Uh, for you know, um, uh, in Bitcoin. Um, so I guess another alternative, um, potentially subscription model instead of doing it by you know two ninety nine per call. I mean, there's a you know, I guess uh, maybe it can be a part of the you know maybe the third you know the third tier of stakeholder. Um, I don't know. Um, I guess um, let's see. I guess that's all my notes. Um, I guess any questions, anyone, I guess, is there anything that I didn't like that's anything glaring that I didn't address that, that anyone has questions on, or I guess any, any thoughts or ideas or, um, logistical possibilities, uh, et cetera. Quick question on the, the logistics. You say 299, uh, zero confirmation transaction. So yep. you're saying that the server would check that it's not already on the Bitcoin network and then redeem it and then send it to the network. So yeah. That good, it, good clarification. Uh, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, and so in this case, um, I mentioned the Bitcoin full node in regards to that because most um, Bitcoin transactions, um, wallets operate like by five or six confirmations, and that usually takes. Um, if people are, you know, sending JPEGs to the blockchain, it can take a long time. Um, but, uh, um, but anyway, yeah. So zero confirmation transaction. We'd have our own Bitcoin full node because they'd have to change. We'd have to change the rules for our how our node operates. Um, so that we're not necessarily worried about, um, you know, if there's one or two transactions that doesn't end up confirming, which I've only, I've only had and it's happened once and it just happened within the past like year or two, um, when my, my first transaction didn't actually confirm. Um, and I've always done one set per byte transaction. So anyway, like I'm not worried about transactions reversing much, but if one or two, 299 transaction reverses, cause it doesn't actually get confirmed. That's really not that big of a deal. We're pretty much just trying to prevent spam and give people a cool service and another potential, you know, source of income for the second realm. So that's what I mean by zero confirmation is, um, that it would make it so we could, we would, we wouldn't have to deal with lightning network, um, which is, which is another infrastructure hurdle that I tried to deal with. And it's not really fun. Um, and it would give us, it would be, it'd make us, it enable our use for, our use of it for Bitcoin, I guess, if that makes sense. Cool. Okay. So, yeah, I just don't, I, I'm not sure exactly how that's, um, I mean, I've seen how it looks, um, obviously with the, you know, the, I guess the one we're using now, I guess the, the, I guess the, uh, digital ocean droplet. I've also seen it on the, the next cloud servers. 
Um, but yeah, I'm just not, I'm not sure myself being a, being a programmer and all, but, uh, and even if we don't come up with one with solutions today, um, the important thing, I, I also want to get this out in the podcast to, you know, get out to a lot more people, um, to, to get more, more minds on it, um, and more interest. And obviously I, yeah, if you guys have anything, I'm, I'm all ears, but yeah, we don't have to come to, to necessarily solutions now, but, um, yeah, as long as it's, you know, out there in the ether and, and, and maybe, and, and I don't know, maybe, maybe it's, maybe it's not a great idea, um. But yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm noticing with with VPSs and with yeah Nextcloud servers and all that, like um, communications being censored is pretty much a thing of the past with that, and that's not even factoring in like SimpleX and, su- and, and such. Um, like uh, like yeah, it can it can try, but when you can spin up a server, spin up a server anywhere in the world with Bitcoin within like five minutes, um, it seems kind of difficult to you know to, to censor communication anymore. Um, at least at least in this in this small narrow regard. Yeah, totally. I was just, uh, I'll have to look into it more. I think there might be an easier way where, you know, someone would send a transaction and, you know, even after it's confirmed once, they could then, you know, log into your server with a signed content that proves that they were the one that sent the transaction. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, this is a this is a new one for me, so I'm going to uh, look into both of those. Thanks. Yeah, and, and maybe yeah, and maybe you're maybe you're on there. Maybe there's already a um, <clears throat> there's some sort of Bitcoin signing thing that are that's already in existence. I could I could you know do this. I guess to a certain extent. I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, you got me thinking in that direction too. I'll have to consult my people, which <clears throat> are also just yeah. funny podcast yeah. guests. But um, but uh, yeah, I guess anyone else anyone else got anything or um, any ideas or yeah anything. Okay. I guess yeah, okay. I would just throw this out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you can hear me from coming through, I, I would just throw out there um, on the mission of spam prevention, you know, and and blockchain. Like, uh, you know, to what degree does it have to be Bitcoin? Um, and you know, I only mean to raise this as it is because you're creating this barrier of entry. Right, um, which which is you know perhaps pertinent, but is the, is that the the appropriate one um, or the uh, the best one, right? Yeah, yeah. That's I mean that that's that's definitely a good. It's definitely a, a, a good point to bring up. Um, we could just bypass the I guess the monetary component altogether. Um, yeah, yeah. I guess it could it could be easier to, to implement it in, in some regards. So yeah, I guess there 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 could be advantages in that direction, um, and um, then yeah, we can you know I guess whenever we we get to that, the second topic of this discussion is you know other you know funding for the second realm and projects. And there's there's plenty of other ways. So th- it's not like that, d- that doesn't have to be a factor. I guess. So yeah, it's it's a good point. Something to, something to consider. I'm just yeah. I don't know if I'm not sure what the there's they're definitely out there's there's definitely spam prevention stuff out there, but I just don't know what off the top of my head what what exactly that would be. But there's plenty of stuff to research. Well, so uh, uh, I, I apologize for stealing the the, the mic here. No, I, I'm just torn by curiosity because Trent's here, I, I, and he mentioned uh, uh, having some specialty in identity, uh, and in this this concept of uh, of, of essentially confirmation, right? Because that's what you're, what you're looking for. So essentially, mixing confirmation with identity is is is, is the idea that I'm looking to throw out into the ether, right? And and, and I guess see, uh, you know, um, it seems like that that you know that's the same thing you're looking for with with with, with Bitcoin, uh, right? Well, so I guess, yeah, I guess except what, for the identity what, part, yeah, yeah, except for the identity part. This, but it doesn't mean that it, again, it doesn't right. mean it, it wouldn't be that. But I'm just pointing out that it's, I guess that is one one difference. Um, doesn't again, again doesn't mean it's not be the possibility or be the, be what works out. But um, but yeah, no, I I I like yeah, I like that. I, I like Trent's idea. So Trent, Trent, do you have I guess any um, any I guess any any, yeah, any any thoughts in this regard? Or Chris, anything else you want to elaborate on before I jump in? Well, I guess but, I would just I, say with with identity, I guess what we would be talking about, it'd be like, it'd be like basically be, it could resemble a vetted network or an open open vetted network. Yeah, 
Yeah, I could totally see that um, if we have signatures that or um, simplex accounts or something that uh, we can tie to people who we hurry permission in. I got to say, I do love the idea of um, charging, even if it's just an internal network, you know, let's charge for this little service and see if we can make some revenue. Um, you know, when I think about some of my own project, I want to give it to the world, but you know, there's costs that have to do with hosting. And so like, what are the, you know, valid reasons why somebody might pay and, you know, for you to host this on a server and do all the setup and that that's real work. And that's something that, you know, is worth paying a little bit for every time. And, um, it's a good way to, to make some at least sustainable, you know, money on the project. So I, I like this idea of, um, a pay as you go, you know, you know, gathering it right at the time for the service. And maybe there's just that little bit of extra that, like you say, it will fund other things over time. So, I, and so, I like and so maybe of a little bit of pain. And maybe it's an and maybe it, Chris, maybe, so maybe you're, you're definitely, um, cause I guess one, one of the, I guess I mentioned in the introduction that maybe one of the perks for the stakeholder benefits, you know, for, you know, joining the network could be, you basically have, you know, free access to the Pasnia Jitsi servers. So yeah, for, um, you know, for the vetted, you know, talking about, you know, identity and, you know, vetted part, the vetted vetted folks in the network could automatically have, you know, access because they're obviously not going to spam it. There's no, they're not, there's obviously no reason to. So yeah, for them, obviously I, I would, I would hundred percent, you know, basically say, yeah, they wouldn't pay two ninety nine for it. Cause they're already, you know, they're already bought in. And then, yeah, maybe for the, you know, you know, it was a general, general public service or uh, something like that. Um, yeah, maybe that's, um, you know, where the, the pain comes in, but I don't know, maybe it's an and and not necessarily an or. Yeah, indeed. And I guess I just follow up with one last thing uh, regarding demand. Just sitting here looking at the screen I'm looking at, um, I'm reminded of Discord. And uh, man, some of the horrors I've seen in Discord, uh, where essentially they're, they're incentivizing things based on you allowing them to moderate your, your channel, essentially. Right. Um, and, and so the holdouts are, are, are on base functionality. And I, I'm mentioning this because uh, potential demand to uh, uh, exit, you know, it, perhaps a max a mass exodus from from Discord could be uh, in, in the future, in the near future. Yeah, and and I guess what one other thing that I, I guess I haven't really had a chance to explore much is. Um, I'm pretty, so Jitsi uses XMPP and XMPP, there are apps that communicate with XMPP, um, on, um, you know, Android devices, or I, I had one of my, even on my spy phone, um, like four or five years ago. Um, so I wonder what sort of backend and plugins there are to Jitsi. And this is kind of over and beyond, or maybe it's not, maybe there, maybe it's just more functionalities need to be explored that are relevant to what we're talking about tonight. But, um, yeah, there, there's, there might be APIs that pull into this too, so it wouldn't necessarily just be a, a you know, a browser-based like Zoom alternative is kind of the bit my biggest use case for for Jitsi, um, but it might be far bigger than that, um, especially if yeah, there are ways to to pull it into um, you know smartphone, even if it's not. Well, I don't know, I, I don't know. It, it would be it, it'd be pretty massive, pretty huge, I think. Yeah, like right now, I'm. I'm actually uh, on the app that I downloaded through F-Droid on, on one of Gmin's ghost phones. So uh, it actually is working really, really well, like versus last time, I think. So they mu must have made some updates. That's good to hear. I'm Jitsi. <clears throat> yeah, that's definitely good to hear. Yeah, Jitsi's product, Jitsi's stuff's always gotten better. Um, it's crazy. I mean, I talked about it before, but I used Jitsi back in 2015 and it's not even, not even close. Um, not even close. Um, which is why I'm happy that when them basically KY saying their people to use their server with a Google account or, um, glad I can still use their stuff. I'm glad we can at least still use their stuff without having to do that nonsense. Um, but Hey, they, they were the catalyst for, for pushing into some of these other things. So, um, it's all good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, any other any other thoughts on um, I guess this line of thought I've been going down or passing a Jitsi servers or um, any other ideas? Okay. 
All right, so I guess um, the next thing, which could tie I've got in. an idea. Oh, yeah, Thomas, please, yeah, please go. Go ahead, yeah. I'm um, not sure how this is going to fit in with our, our uh, assembly here, but but uh, there was an announcement made relatively recently about another uh, a service called Zero Host, I think it is. Let me see. I've got it here on my – and uh, it's basically a uh, – Let's see, bring it up here. Yeah, zero eyes dot host. It's uh, it's put out by the Dollar Vigilante, the technical guy, uh, uh, Patrick Smith, I think his name is. Um, so they've got the, a whole new plan called the po Polynom, uh, which the first version of it looks like it's free. The community version is free, and it provides a huge amount of of, of, of encryption and, and video and. and chat services and that type of thing. Again, I'm not sure how this fits into our, our assembly here because we're talking about funding our own effort. But uh, I'm wondering whether or not this other alternative would be a, a better way to go in terms of rather than having to in, uh, invent our own network and our own separate thing. But there's value in that too. Just a thought hey, here. Hey, no, I, I appreciate that. I'm not f familiar with this, but just looking down the page, I mean, Twelve dollars a month for secure hosting for Polynom Street. I don't know what all these words, you know, what the, I guess I'll add up. Yeah, again, dig in more, but um, I guess yeah, this I will be excited to look into this more. I appreciate you bringing that up. Yes, and I'm I'm always open to, um, yeah. I mean, yeah. Please feel free to share any. Yeah, if so, you got any any solutions or alternatives like that, yeah, please feel free to share. Hey, Thomas, uh, I look at polynom.app, and on the top it says unrivaled post-quantum cryptography and proprietary security. So is this something that would be open source for community, or is it all? You know, I'm not really sure about the open source nature of it. I haven't really dug into this deeply, but uh, the people that are putting it forth are, are pretty strong libertarians so i mean uh, you know volunteerists so i wouldn't be surprised on the other hand they might be because they are starting a service for the for the hosting i don't know about the polynom app itself but um with regard to the hosting they do charge a fee but you have to pay for the infrastructure somehow but perhaps the reason that they might not have it open source in your face on the websites right now is they're trying to ramp up their service that's just my thought i don't know if that's the case or not but Okay. No, it's good to hear a little bit more about the people behind it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think I think the people behind it are pretty good. I yeah, I will I will and I will I will, I will at least pour, partially vouch for Patrick Smith. I talked to him once, and people had I mean yeah he he seems like a good dude. Um, yeah, I was on I guess the Dollar Vigilante once like four years ago, something like that, with him. And yeah, I I, I yeah I got a good mm -hmm. vibe from him. Yeah, he's the one that uh, has taken over um, the Anarchast from. Right. Oh yeah, Anarchist. Uh, that, that's what I meant. Yeah, um, Anarchast, not the. Yeah, that's right. what I meant. Anarchast. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Glad you glad you corrected that. Yeah, Anarchast. Right. Cool. Well, yeah, that's a that's a good lead. Thank you for that. You he did a he did a um, he did a video to introduce this whole. Uh, quantum resistant technology and this whole chat service. It's pretty, I'm trying to find the link. I've got it here. Um, it's probably right here in the same window. Yeah. And so I'll mention again for the, for the podcast again? listeners, zero Oz dot host is uh, the link Z E R O E Y E S dot host. Um, if anyone wants to check that out for the podcast listening audience. And what was the name of the guy? Somebody Smith? Patrick Smith. Patrick Smith. Patrick Smith. And that's not, I mean, different from Jeff Berwick, who I uh, I thought was yeah, yeah, different. Yeah, Berwick is not a very, I would, I would vouch for him for no. sure. No, 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 no. Yeah, because I thought he ran the Anarchist. Used to, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Well, I mean, uh, that was good. I'll open it up anymore. Uh, once more, if anyone's got anything else, love to toss out. 
I think if you do a search, if, if you're interested to see the interview that Patrick Smith did about all this, I think you can find it online, although I'm having a struggle finding it right now for myself. But okay. I think it's on there somewhere. Well, that's, that's good to know. Too many will, windows, too many link, too many tabs. I'll hear that in post-production, <laughs> and I will um, pull up the tab then. Um, that's good. All right, I finally found it. Here we go. Um, I'm going to post okay. this into that's the okay. chat. Yeah, that's even better. So, I don't know, I, am I addressing Rayo? Um, but you, you've mentioned that you're getting a Jitsi server set up. Uh, so, if, you know, if we were able to use that server by next time, you know, maybe All right, there you go. Maybe it's worth running a uh, uh, experiment to pay, you know, for the next, you know, some of us who are on this uh, chat can, can pay before we get in or something. Um, yeah. So, so let me ask. Yeah, let me ask. Um, so, so Jamin, are you there, brother? Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> cool. So, um, sure. so question. Um, because I know. Um, the reason I'm not sharing around the uh, the link publicly now is because there's no restrictions on access. Um, and yeah, we only have so much use. But um, so Jamin, do you know? Um, I know you haven't tooled around with this much at all, um, so um, you may you may not. But um, do you know what the I guess the is, I guess the access controls are? Um, I guess settings wise, and I guess the digital ocean drop it, and I guess it's not necessarily relevant for um, the next cloud part of it. But the next cloud stuff, the public one won't be available. Um, well, I guess it, for by next time, if it's a month or two, I guess it's possible. But um, I'm just I'm I guess I'm just thinking if it's not. Um, Jamin, what are the, I guess, the access controls, um, if you know, or I guess like, what's that, what's that what infrastructure look like? Um, cause you, you mentioned that you left it open, I guess, uh, the sure Jesse server. Oh, well, quiet. Oh, uh, did I, I did what? Oh, I'm sorry, man. I'm yeah. confused. <laughs> so for the, for the digital ocean droplet, um, for Jitsi. Yeah. Um, so there's no, um, okay, password, I know, there's no okay, password I know, or anything. Yeah. Um, for it, do you know? Is it oh, just yeah, like yeah. password? Just is it just password, it or is it just, or is there like, are there more possibilities for that? I guess is the question. Oh yeah, there, it's there's multiple, multiple ways to do it. Um, there can be a global password, I think, and there can be specific user accounts too. Okay. Interesting. So maybe, yeah, that's. I guess that's. Um, yeah. Again, I'm not sure if that that might not be worth looking into for for DigitalOcean because it's not going to be that long um we're not going to be using it for that long and uh, you know i'm just saying off the top of my head like well maybe if we create a user account for every single person and they get their own you know access login but that seems like complicated if we're not gonna use it for that long so um i like that i love the idea of moving quickly but um and we may um i think the next cloud server i guess that's that's kind of the first step and then um some uh, uh, yeah maybe not by next time <laughs> i guess is long i guess long answer short um, but I, 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 hopefully so. Um, that'd be cool. Things have been moving quickly. Well, yeah. And I tell you what, so <laughs> there's a, um, rotary group that meets nearby and every time they go, they go every week, these guys are hardcore and they pass around the hat, like, and every single week people put in like 20 bucks every time, so every single person there and it gathers a, a whole bunch of money. Um, and so in this meeting, you know, that this could be a case where, we, you know, gather a little bit or, or put a, uh, some addresses up that we could contribute to, to be, you know, just showing our support for the, all of this, even if it's just five bucks mm -hmm. in some cryptocurrency to an address. Um, and maybe we don't have any of the piping done. Maybe there's, you know, nothing automatic that lets people in and permission, but, uh, you know, we're gathering money and, you know, Josiah, you know, can see it in our account and, and report on it. And so some of these, other non-technical, you know, pipes are being exercised, um, but it, it could be something that we could encourage, you know, on a monthly basis, and you know, get even just a few dollars every time. Uh, and it might be important to use other currencies because Bitcoin fees are currently really high. Yeah, um, it's not. Fun. But uh, yeah, just some other ideas for getting some real money to you. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. And um, I guess an idea I, I thought I, I had last time, I'm not seeing one on Twitter, so it's not my idea, but something that came to mind. We've got a, we've got a Bitcoin general fund. I've been use, I, I, admittedly, I've been using Monero a little bit more because the Bitcoin fees have been kind of ridiculous. Um, 
but uh, maybe we'll, maybe we have to start a Monero general fund too um, for Pasnia. Um, because yeah, the Bitcoin Absolutely. feeds the buying gift cards. The the checkout times out by the time the Bitcoin transaction goes through, or else you just got it, or else <laughs> it's not worth it. So, yeah, yeah, it's unfortunate at the moment, but um, yeah, cool, very cool. So, um, I guess let's let's uh, um, go on. I mean, yeah, we're moving at a good pace. I think. Um, don't want to you know rush too much, but um, want to make sure there's plenty plenty of time for um, to to leave the floor open for additional topics. Um, but as for this one, um, yeah, you know, we're talking about the importance uh, um, of being able to fund projects. Um, oh, Thomas, you seem to, Thomas seems to have, have lost audio. Um, I'm sure you've tried to tried to uh, refresh, but everyone else, um, I mean, seems like okay. So we'll hopefully it refreshes and and that works. Um, but uh, yeah, talking about uh, the importance of being able to fund projects. Um, and you know, I, I guess you know, or it's not maybe even just cover cover expenses, et cetera. So, um, I guess uh, just um, be, this was something brought up in the Simple X chat by I think Scratch again, who I hope he's able to join one of these meetings sometime. Um, but uh, yeah, how to fund Department of Te- Department of Technology projects, or just you know, um, I guess more generally, but we'll, but in this one, um, we'll focus on Department of Technology. But uh, yeah, we've got the General Fund Bounty Program, Visa Vis Josiah. Um, so Josiah, um, I guess the the way that works. Um, which I think he briefly explained um, at the beginning is if there was a bounty for, um, you know, if we put like uh, whatever the amount of Satoshis would be, $500 bounty on if a developer, you know, develops some piece of, you know, makes this integration somewhere, um, then once they complete the task, they get the Bitcoin. Um, so that's one way to fund it is basically just put bounties on tasks um, and, you know, bounties on things. And um, that's one way. Um, another is, uh, yeah, bartering for stakeholder memberships, which is something that people do here at Veritas um, a lot. Maybe not all in the digital sphere, but um, certainly could be done digitally. Um, the next one we, we've been talking about, uh, there's a simple X group for it, but um, our classifies and logistics app. The, uh, I guess the, uh, the, the low-tech dark lands, Matthew, is, is, is what that is. But um, there are, you know, escrow service possibilities um, for, for people, uh, multi-sig, arbitration, um, people could pay to boost listings on classifieds or even on the public map. Um, Secrel maps basically anywhere. Um, and um, I guess someone else brought up the idea of, and again, just like the first one, I'm kind of d- just dumping out possibilities to to to, to get things moving. But um, I guess like Scratch mentioned, you know, maybe using some other tokens or creating a token or something. Um, but my comment on that is basically the only tokens I would really consider are Bitcoin color tokens, um, if that's even a thing that's still around. Um, could have around Pasnia Bitcoins um, or whatever, but I, I don't know um, whether it's colored t- colored coins or not. A crypto project adds a ton of complexity um, and potential unneeded liabilities. So I'm kind of just against that idea in general and just use Bitcoin and Monero for now. And obviously people can use whatever they want to in between each other, but that's just, um, yeah, seems to be the, the easiest route, at least in that way. I'm not, I'm not about uh, <laughs> taking on the, the project of developing a, a cryptocurrency. So I don't know. I guess I'll, I'll, I'll leave it open there. Um, I'll, I'll leave open the floor. What what ideas do you guys have for for funding Department of Technology projects? Um, I guess anything you'd like to elaborate um, on any of these other ones. So let's open up the floor there. Well, okay. So just real briefly, I just would like to defend what I believe is the core concept of a cryptocurrency, uh, and it, it's the ability to incentivize a behavior. Uh, and it, right, like Bitcoin incentivizes mining. Uh, I think uh, uh, cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency, you know, as as a you know, uh, distinct from just just blockchain. Um, clearly, a cryptocurrency is a blockchain, but a cryptocurrency, yeah, it certainly, um, I think, can have an internal purpose and uh, can be very empowering. So. Like, okay, so, uh, and again, going back to confirmations. So right now the idea is, is that you have to chase some uh, random number, uh, some uh, some hash, right, to, to get the, uh, uh, the reward or whatever, right? So in this case, uh, the confirmations can just be personal. Like, I'm not sure why you couldn't have a blockchain with personal confirmations. Right. So, so I just want to throw that out there. 
Ten four. Right on. I, I love that concept. I, I'm going to show something a little bit later that uh, dovetails with that. Well, I think now would uh, might be a good time, Trent, because um, I guess another um, another uh, I guess swing on this um, or perspective on this isn't yeah it's it's uh, you know bartering uh, you know bartering labor bartering time because um, I mean yeah that could could just as well be um, you know a form of foreign payment um, you know a form of exchange so um, I guess that does could could it's not I guess. Do you see that as a, I guess, a, a, a potentiality, um, kind of in your thinking? And um, I guess, yeah, I guess beyond that, feel free to, you know, further, you know, introduce your top, introduce, uh, you know, what you're working on, and, um, yeah, obviously, floor, floor is yours, brother. Okay, uh, it, and I'm glad you said that because I, I should have mentioned, I, I don't see personal confirmations in a network being something you can trade. Um, I, it's definitely a topic I'd love to talk about. Um, but I will show. Is it possible to share my screen? I it's it's supposed myself, to be. But... I've never actually tested screen share on Jitsi before. Um, but yeah, you, you're uh, supposed okay. to be able to share. Okay, so, so I, I've also thought about it too. So it, if you couldn't do personal uh, confirmations, imagine personal rejections. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good point. And and those are those are valuable information. So. I am showing my screen. Can people see it? It's just black on my end. It looks like my video before the <laughs> before the assembly. Yeah, it's been it's been glitchy. Yeah, the, I, thankfully I don't think a digital ocean droplet's going to be around long. Um, it's it's I mean it's working out well enough for audio, but the video's kind of not great. And okay, I guess people yeah, can see it. Might just be me. I guess I guess it might not just be me. So that's fine. Yeah, if, if, yeah, go for it. Yeah, it's just yeah, if you're not. Someone, Someone else can see it. Yeah, yeah I'll see it. So yeah, I'll go for go it. Ahead and, uh, give a quick um, um, intro. If you, you want to go to test.timesafari.app, you can <laughs> see <laughs> porn tabs. I'm like, yeah, well, I just I want to share everything with everyone here. Um, <laughs> so let me put the safari.app. You know, I, I value you as very there close friends. So this um, is. Uh, a, a, a test server so far, and there is permissions to get onto it. Now, the goal is to get to where there's just frictionless ability to collaborate, where even kids feel like they have the freedom. You know, we have free range kids that are running around and running projects, and we can get involved in them and support them. And, you know, we're asking for money, and we, we need money to, you know, sustain ourselves and also host our servers. But I, what I'm focused on here in this project is finding collaborators and finding vetted people and people who have the same interests that want to help. So um, first, this is, this is a technical call, so two technical points. Every interaction here is a verifiable credential, which is a signed uh, credential, cryptographically signed. And then the server doesn't keep personal info except for the id so like you could see this account has an id that's in ethereum did um, and that's what the server knows it doesn't know uh, anything about else about your name so the whole point is to have personal data stores on your own computer this is built as a personal web app so you know this front page is a feed that i hope would be attractive to even my wife I can't, I'm going to have her on here in the next month and see how well she and my neighbors use it who are non-technical. And, you know, they can see things that have been given. And one of the um, important parts of this is to be able to connect this to your own network. So if I were to click on one, um, I maybe I can't see some of the data about it because they're not in my network. But they could be visible to somebody in my network. And so this person happens to be in my network and I can contact them to ask them for more to see if they can confirm it. So there is that sense of getting on a network. Now, the initial um, goal is to allow it to allow people to make projects. 
And here's some of the projects on this test server. And if we click on one, then let's say we find that this one is one we want to contribute to. So we'll say, hey, I'm going to offer, you know, I'll give, um, you know, one online hour if you get three other people. Now, this part eventually would be built into the data packets and, and we could create reports on it. Right now, it's just English text. So let's say, okay, I'm going to offer an hour, sign it, send it. It's a signed, like I say, a signed data packet. And so other people who look at this project will see, okay, well, uh, here's some offers that I can see on there. If I'm the one who created this project, then I can look at the offers and get to the point where, okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, you know kick this off now, now that I've got enough people who are interested. So that's the whole goal is crowdfunding with people's time so that I can say what I'm interested in, get that um, interest in my network and find out if it's something even worth pursuing. Now, afterwards, I'll just tease on what's in the future, which is things like, okay, if somebody has actually given to this project, then you know we can record that. And I'll say, hey, uh, you know what? Um, Matthew came, showed up. And so he'll show up in the gives. If somebody wants to look at these and see, you know, uh, they can potentially see who else has, uh, you know, connections to this person who has given. So um, we can also, if it's somebody who I know and I have seen, I can see all the giver information, then I could confirm it. I could say, yes, I personally know that this is true. So I'm going to add a confirmation onto here. And my network would be able to either see it directly if they, it's somebody they know, or if there's one link away, they could do that search. Eventually, there's more that I want to do to preserve privacy. Right now, the server does have that ID and your um, network information. And I want to get away from that. But this is the first draft that is actually usable that um, I would like to get you know, people's feedback on and allow people on it. Right now, to get on it, you have to be uh, sponsored by somebody. So you'd have to get in touch with myself or Matthew. And we can let you on. Um, but you know, the, that, that goal of starting to build that network and then seeing who you know, in my network might confirm somebody and who I can connect to um, is, is the big idea. So Damn. I'll just I'll leave it there. If you want to see more, you can go to um, livesofgifts.org. I'll put that in the chat, um, livesofgiving.org. At the very top is a link to that. At the very bottom is my contact info and some blog info. So I will just stop right there and uh, take comments and any other questions. So Trent, I, I will I will say that I'm, I'm I. I've heard you, you know, give an introduction and all, um, you know, some summaries to what you're working on. But um, seeing that site and, you know, hearing further elaboration, unfortunately, I couldn't see it through through Jitsi. Other people could. So that's, you know, that's that's all good. That's what's important. But um, I was, you know, scrolling through the, the test site. Um, dude, damn, dude, dude, like you've got it. I mean, yeah, I, I, I see the full vision now. And uh yeah, I'm I'm into it. Um, because I, I was I was showing on screen for the for the Odyssey and, and Fascist Two viewers. Um, yeah, you know some of those you know those test those test giving things. And yeah, it wasn't just you know there were some that were, um, you know, uh, gave someone a bike or you know, um, you know, gave a bike or, um, one that was you know there were some some small fiat donations. There was a a, a few Bitcoin donations. You know, someone gave such such Bitcoin and you could verify the claim and, um. And and all that, and then there was you know just you know needed someone needed help moving a stove or like it, regardless like it, it's it's far more expensive than just what we're talking about um, tonight and but um, 
Yeah, I'll have to think about this further, Trent. But which, yeah, you're working on something really important, man. Um, I need you ha- need to have you on the Vani podcast sometime to get more in depth with it. Now that I, I, yeah, now that I, I've seen it, um, yeah, it's I'd important love to stuff. do that. Yeah, the I'm, I'm glad, the feed I think is is one of my favorites because it's going to show just things that are given, and that's what I hope. Uh, we have one last feature, which is making it work on Android with notifications, because I want when i onboard my wife and my neighbors i want for them to get a reminder hey get on and you know express something that you've been given and start building that you know <laughs> let's create these projects together uh show what is already going on instead of uh having people rely on oh i'm going to go to the state the county the city office and some other institution to solve my problems. Mm-hmm. Let's build that part with our actual neighbors. But I will admit that it's this freedom group that uh, I think we'll see the whole vision a little bit better. And I'd like to grow some governance outside of you know City Hall. And maybe this is a way to do it. Maybe this is a way to get people to offer you know things that they can do for neighborhood watches um, or management of food and grow that so that we can show people there's a viable alternative but you know that is the long term yeah wow man well the first i've seen this it it looks really good i i really am impressed with what i just saw that's great thank you thank you wow yeah a lot going through my head but i will uh let it refine a little bit. So I still got, yeah, I still got to, I think there was another link that you sent me before, um, Trent, that I had to, or maybe it was, maybe it was the app. Maybe I hadn't gotten the app downloaded or something, but, um, yeah, I am definitely more encouraged more, I guess more. Yeah. I need to check it out sooner rather than later. Um, and more detail. And yeah, like, like I said, have you on the Vonnie yeah, podcast I, too. We need to go, we need to go in depth, lay it out. What, what I need, like I say, anybody, uh, you know, give time, after this and uh i'll record some of your time on you know that you've given me uh to 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 make this happen and those are like i say signed transactions that, that you can hold on to forever people talk about nfts and so that you're using like you know, you're using this you're using digital signatures to verify an these right essentially so yeah it's combining you know it's it's I, I love it just like this this amazing combination of um yeah cryptography and all Exactly. And be an NFT that I bought, or is it going to be a signed, um, uh, you know, transaction from my principal or my, and the teacher signed off on it. And if that teacher has reputation, then, you know, that means more than any tokens or other things that people generate. It's like people want to build reputation around you know, what they've actually attested to. Um, so I, I hope to make these more attractive than even NFTs, you know, your own signature really means something. Yeah. Amazing, brother. Amazing. And it's, it seems like it might be that 50, 53 minute mark where there may start to be a little lanes here. Maybe that's just on my end. Maybe it cleared up by now, but I haven't heard anyone talk yet. So I guess we'll, we'll have to see. Um, but um, yeah, that's that's uh, that's amazing, man. That might be a more overarching solution. It might be a solution, a, a, a big solution to the you know funding these sorts of projects or you know making them happen. And uh, then yeah, even beyond that, um, my mind's racing. So I look forward to to more conversations um, on that, more in depth conversations. But um, I guess uh, just to to open it back up to anyone else. Um, obviously, you can still you know keep keep talking about Trent's project. Um, but, uh, yeah, I guess, and any other thoughts, any other, um, you know, any other ideas outside of that? Um, yeah, open it up. And if there's nothing, then yeah, I guess we'll open it up to any other topics or questions or, um, things beyond department of technology or I guess anything PASNI, anything self-liberation, you saw a, a funny video or saw something really impactful that you want to share or anything, um. Okay, so I guess I guess um, while I'm looking at this, 
I'm I'm not sure I fully grasp it, but but I see a, it's all about giving. Um, is there any place I can take? Or like, uh, which uh, it's a rhetorical question. I'm not I'm not necessarily looking for an, for a response to the question. Um, I guess. Uh, I mean, through the uh, concept I, I threw out before uh, called Dror currency. Uh, I'm not sure if Trent has ever heard of it, but it's D E R. You spell that? Yeah, D E R O R, Dror currency. Um, and this is from Colin McKay. Uh, I, I, can't, I don't know if he's from Australia or New Zealand. Uh, one of the two, but. Um, when I when I followed the money, I found I found Colin McKay, and he followed the money, and he found alchemical sex magic, uh, and drawer currency is essentially his concept of of essentially using what's being used against us for our own good, um, because like like we, like when we attempt to use external currencies, we in in some ways restrict ourselves and in some ways, you know, we benefit ourselves. And I, and I don't mean to speak collectively, but anyways, thank you for this. I'm glad you pointed that out. Um, one of the big things that have influenced me is fi uh, debt. The first 5,000 years by David Graeber. Um, it, it's a cool history of how, yeah, these, you know, money came about as debt and, um, I'm going to read more about this. I, I love that idea. And it, it does seem really easy to just correct me if I'm wrong, but it's kind of tracking a balance between two people. I'm going to, you know, give you so many credits and we just over time, see if there's a balance between us and, you know, or, or see if it gets, uh, too unbalanced. Uh, yes, but it's also self canceling, right? Um, and, and here's where uh, uh, most people can't like quite accept it. Um, but it's it, it's not about accumulation. It's not about, you know, driving anybody into debt. It's about maintaining the balance. It's about helping maintain the balance, you know. Uh, and and so, yeah, so it, it has a little bit more of, of, of the give and take mentality. And, and I have a few ideas in, in, in mind, uh, uh, you know, to, to – talk about it sometime but um i'm not sure if that's the you know if, if now is a fitting time to elaborate further on this uh topic but um thank you for listening yeah check out drawer, drawer currency um because yeah it it, it essentially yeah it, it allows for give and take essentially and I, and, I, and I think that's what we're doing when we can learn you know when we can uh enable ourselves to give and take from each other uh within the second realm we, we won't have to give and take in the first realm yeah Say, Trent, um, out of curiosity, it's it's kind of old history for me, but when I was uh, with a group called the Ozarks Neighborly Exchange, it was a, kind of a grassroots cooperative kind of thing in a community, um, I discovered this economic system called the LETS, L-E-T-S. Yeah. It's similar to what you're doing, but you've, you've filled in a lot of the gaps with the confirmations, for for example. That's really great. I'm wondering if that if that philosophy have you ever heard of the let system and whether that has impacted your your design of of this uh, system you just put together? Absolutely. I mean, Berkshires and you know all of those time exchange systems are obviously great inspiration. Cool. Thought it seemed familiar. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you, Rail, for putting this together and. Uh, uh, acting as the MC for it and appreciate all the efforts you're putting forth in the second realm. Looking forward to seeing you again sometime soon. And with regard to the, uh, well, I'll, I'll deal with that offline some other time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. I don't want to take any more mic time, but, uh, come back to me like if if nobody else has anything come back to me before we sign off here I okay kind of a couple things <laughs> send for chris okay well i'll say chris it's uh i'll say floor is yours brother
Okay, well, I'm going to start simple here. Uh, see if I can't get some audience participation. Just some simple questions. Uh, kind of spur of the moment uh, earlier. Uh, I'm, I'm curious how many people here use Git, G-I-T, Git, uh, version control. Okay, okay, that's raising your hand. Is that one? Yeah, I do. Okay, we still got one. Thomas, do you use Git too? Yep. Oh, you yep. like to speak? Okay, so we got we got two people that use Git. Three, Jamin. Jamin, I'm not sure if we, is Josiah's name covered down there. I'm not sure is that Josiah down there still. Okay. Uh, Josiah um, left. Um, I don't think Josiah uses Git. He don't, he's not a developer. I think probably Matthew does because um, I know he's okay, used GitLab. Guys, so I think pretty much everyone but me. Okay, and so. I, okay, so. Keep your hand up uh, if you use GitHub. I'm just, okay, if you use Git, you use GitHub. Okay, and, and I'm talking about like you commit, like you, like you you commit to Git. Like you know, you don't, don't, don't just download, you commit. Oh, Jamin, okay, Jamin only downloads. Okay, that's on GitHub. Okay, now what about what about GitLab? Who here uses GitLab? Like private GitLab to any degree? Anybody? Okay. Yeah, I do. Still Trent. Great. Okay. Thank you for those questions. Uh, the last, okay, well, I got, I got a couple other things. I, I wanted to mention a, a potential after party after our, we lose our MC and go off the, the official record. Uh, just throwing that out there. And also, and, and, and also maxing out the, uh, the server if anybody's got uh anything to throw in front of their camera to see if our like the server can actually handle 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 video uh but okay lastly uh it would be uh simple simple x like the simple x uh and and if anybody's got a real beat on how the uh i guess the usage of the uh incognito mode is is meant to meant to facilitate or like i i seem to be missing something and and maybe somebody knows something regarding simple x uh that i or the clue that i don't know well josiah could have helped you with the incognito mode thing i think at least a personal experience but um and i hope to have so I, I'm, I'm in contact with evgeny the, the uh the founder of simplex on on simplex and uh, it's been hard to get in contact with him. We've exchanged a couple messages, but obviously he's in Europe, so it's, it's a little difficult time-wise, I guess, for us to overlap. But um, I want to have him on the Bonding Podcast, and then once we are acquainted, I want to have him on, you know how we did, uh, I guess it was like last March with uh, Dave from Start OS. Um, and I guess he kind of got put in the hot seat, per se, and he just kind of grilled on questions. I want to do kind of the same thing with Simplex Guy. Because um, I think he I think he's he seems like, I don't know, I get a good, I get a good vibe from him. Um, I really do. Matt and I have been trying to use Simple X to do video, uh, <clears throat> to do video, and, and it hasn't worked for us very well. So, yeah. so I I, have, I can't even get the video to work mm. between my desktop and my 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 Android phone, unfortunately. So, so to, to me, uh, Simple X is great for chat, but so far it hasn't proven to be really reliable for video or or voice. Right. Although I haven't tried it with voice very much. Right, yeah, and that, that's how I've been explaining the the necessity for both like Jitsi and um, Simplex is that Simplex is a little behind on Jitsi with the video and audio chats. Um, Simplex is great for like the Telegram type stuff. Um, might be a day or so on delay on notifications, but um, but yeah, Jitsi is great um, for for video and for video chat. Well, re regarding video, I'm seeing my video come through clear. I see Thomas might be playing his video, or he was. And then he froze. I turned um, mine on. Just so, to see like, if we're talking about on. Jitsi's video as if it's okay. Well, no, um, like audio at least. Yeah, well, Jitsi's we, not. Yeah, Jitsi's not. We, <laughs> Good point. Yeah, I turned my video on, and it's been on. When I saw Trent started flashing his video, I turned mine on. It hasn't gone off, and I haven't seen any disruptions in audio at all. And in, in Rayo's video is fine. It's frozen. Rayo's video is frozen now, but but up until that point. It, Everything was smooth, but 
again, as far as a test is concerned, if we could get everybody to turn their cameras on, that that would be a better better test of. Uh, but again, you're you're also uh, just really testing out the server infrastructure as yeah, opposed to that's, Jitsi itself. Exactly, and that's not that's not that important right now because yeah, we're gonna get off this. It's within a month or two, I hope. Um, something better. But yeah, it's been great for audio, and I do see Thomas's video back on. Mm -hmm. Um, I turned mine on, but I I I don't know if I'm if I'm coming through or not. I can't see my video. You're coming through fine for me. I can see okay, it really well. well. I can't see mine no. at all. So yeah, no. I, know, nice I, I haven't yeah. had I haven't had any video come through for you, Rayo. Okay. Yeah. So it may just, it may just, it may be, so maybe it's not necessarily Jitsi. Maybe it's the fact that Jitsi's peer to peer and it, it, it shows videos. Cause I see notifications on my end, um, that it will turn off videos when my bandwidth will drop. So maybe it does it, um, like, it will, yeah, I, I think it, maybe it does it peer to peer too in this way. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Or yeah, where it determines based off the individual's connection, but I don't know. Well, yeah. So, like, you know, if if we are gonna um, maximize or like try to offer or create some type of Jitsi service, we definitely have to want to use it. I I don't necessarily have a need to be on video, although I know somebody who does like to be on video. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, but yeah. So the clearly, like with Jitsi being a, a for it for it to be a viable option, the video has to be sustainable. True. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I, I, I don't disagree. I definitely I don't think disagree. Probably, but then again, video is not always necessary. I think the whole, uh, the, viability, the whole viability of video I think is primarily due to the, the infrastructure, the server and the, the connections that each of us have. Mm hmm Yeah. Video is and I can't remember I think it was Brian Sovereign. I I talked to him back in like twenty eighteen. And um he was talking about, um, and I, and I, you know, I'm gonna badly paraphrase a long time ago, but um, like the streaming video um, takes a lot, um, and like because we were talking about like uh, mesh networks and things, and he was like, we can do mesh networks now, like, but video is not gonna happen. <laughs> so like the the reason that we don't have those now, like one of the main reasons is because we want super high fast internet, and you can't necessarily do that with um, like you know Bitcoin for internet essentially, like you can't do that. Um, but, uh, yeah, video streaming is, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, it seems like video streaming, I thought it was just like a, you know, a done and gone thing, but apparently it's, um, it's a lot, it's a lot harder to do. And especially if you're trying to manage, um, <clears throat> you know, manage the infrastructure yourself. Um, I mean, I don't know. I know like I, I do very basic stuff with like cloud storage and then like, um, realize how, you know, how shitty some corporate, you know, you know, corporate storage systems are when it, they could do better for with like a few hundred dollars and so, you know, and like hardware. Um, so it's, 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 um, <clears throat> it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it takes, I mean, it takes, it takes a lot to do this sort of thing, I think. Um, which is why like for, for video, at least audio, I don't think is a problem, but streaming video, um, yeah, video is where things get, get really big. <laughs> So, um, yeah, again, I don't think video is an absolute necessity. I think like for, especially for like for these conversations, we don't need video. Um, screen sharing is nice. And apparently some people could see the screen share. Um, I never done that test on Jitsi. So I'm glad, I'm glad Trent tested it out for us. And again, it may, it may have been based off our individual connections. Whoever had better connections could see it. Those who couldn't, couldn't. So, um, no, well, no. indeed. I, I, just be clear. I, I wasn't. I wasn't suggesting we needed a video for these conversations. Oh, no, 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 I get you. But if we're, you know, to to offer, to offer Jitsi as a as a as a service. Uh, well, yeah, for yeah, yeah, like yeah, no, I get you. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Seems like you need, yeah, that would need to be. Um, well, I, I guess for for the most part, yeah, yeah, for the most part, yeah. Um, no, I get you. I get you. Yeah, it's hard, man. It de it definitely is, um, and it's shitty. Like Jitsi's been around. Um, like there is as as like as in terms of like an alternative to Zoom, this is like the best we have for open source. And and I love Jitsi, so I'm not talking shit about it. Um, I've already done that once, but um, 
um, once in an article five, like four or five years, three, three, four years ago. But um, no, like it's, it's not easy to, yeah, I mean, and, and yeah, it's, it's, it's not easy to get to, to, to get to this point. Um, it's definitely not. Um, and I guess I'll, I'll just, I'll just mention one more anecdotal example from 2015 where we actually had to manually confirm keys and just see like the ZRTP and the OTR. <clears throat> um, yeah. Like imagine before we had to connect, if we all had to exchange like multiple keys, that's how Jitsi was like eight years ago. Like there, so I'm not saying so. Yeah, like it, it's not, it's not perfect by any means. But Jitsi's the one like it's been around for a while, and they have their corporate, you know, fundraising shenanigans that make me cringe. Like that just make me cringe. But um, they're still around, <laughs> and it'll get better. Um, so yeah, I guess it, it's the, the one of the problems is we don't we don't really have a whole lot of options, especially one that's open source. Um, and vetted like Jitsi is, so it, like it doesn't really matter what their you know what their you know nonprofit organization does. Um, it's really upon it's really up to the people that host the servers that you know run the software. So that's where we can improve a lot, I think. You know, in terms of exchanging keys beforehand, I mean that's kind of the model that Simplex is using, Simplex, uh, because you can't connect with somebody unless you either get an invite or you're there in person to exchange a QR code. True. So in terms of private key exchange. That's pretty much the same way that that Simplex works, and it is a bit of a pain in the butt, but it, it but it's but it's secure and it's private. That I mean, that's how you ensure privacy is by doing that type of approach. Yeah, I think this is the group, yes. this is the kind of ecosystem where we're going to make this happen. Everybody else is just going to get on Facebook and Google, but um, you know, we'll start adding trusted peers, and hopefully, we host them ourselves. You know, we have them in our own devices and start making the connections that way. There's not great technology for it, like Google contacts, everybody's in Google contacts um, and trying to get your, get them just on your own device is hard and, and link them between the apps is I haven't found good ways to do it yet, but uh, definitely want to grow that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of great contributions. I guess uh, I'll I'll just hearken one of one of Chris's questions from earlier because Thomas seems like you have a better understanding of Simplex than than I do. But um, I looked through their white paper in preparation for a hopeful interview with Evgeny if I can get in contact with him. But do you understand their server? Because I I feel like one one of their unique aspects is their server infrastructure. Um, but I don't really understand it. Um, cur I'm curious. Just I mean, I you know anything. I haven't looked deeply at the server infrastructure, but I do know you can prov they, they provide this. You can and you can self-host basically. So I mean mm -hmm. that's that's one thing that Matt was looking into earlier was was self-hosting a, a a Simplex site, but I think he's been too busy to to, to focus on. Yeah, that. yeah, that's yeah. Simplex is yeah. That's kind of where I'm at with Simplex too. I want yeah. That's uh, I want to get more into the server stuff because I don't know how one it works. Good thing about Simplex. They're very, they're very the, the development of it is very active. I mean, I guess a couple of weeks ago when we were first getting into this thing, maybe a month or so, um, I fired up a few questions to the to the developer chat that's available in the application, and I got immediate responses, and there were changes right away. And then they announced a a, a new version of the of the that provided a desktop for Linux, which was something that wasn't out there initially. So so I think the active I think the development. So, progress that they're making is, yeah. is pretty fast and they apparently have a pretty good team working on it 100 percent, and that's why no that i i love that i've been it's been hard to get in contact with evgeny because he's actually building um so yeah no like they're yeah. They're, they're yeah they're they're constantly saying it's not it's not game time ready yet for all applications it's it's really great for it's one application if it you know though just be forewarned it may take 24 hours for you to receive a message or something um, not a big deal for most purposes, but, um, yeah, anyway, they're building it. Yeah. Yeah. They're definitely building it. All right. Anything else, gentlemen? All right. Well, I, I suppose I will go ahead and wrap it up. Um, Trent, I will uh, I will be getting in contact with you um, individually to um, get you on the Vonnie podcast. And uh, yeah, needs to happen. We'll make it happen. 
Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, there you have it, uh, the fourth ever Pasnia Sevgram Assembly, a meeting of our Department of Technology. Uh, huge, thank to the main panel, uh, huge thanks to the main panel, panel members and everyone else who offered anything at all, um, even if uh, you're just highly valuable attention um, on you know, the podcast or video versions. Uh, and for anyone who was here live, I mean, fuck, a couple hours on a Friday night to talk about this sort of nerdy shit. Um, you're devoted, I'm devoted, and, and that's why I'm so happy to have spent it with you all. Um, to stay up to date with Department of Technology topics, I would highly suggest you download Simplex, we've been talking about, uh, either on your ghost phone, Android device, uh, or a VSCLI on a laptop, uh, if that's more your speed. But actually, I guess that, that, that was from the last Simplex, and that's not actually relevant, because there is a desktop application now. Still not great, but again, it will get better, and probably but day by day. Uh, so head on over to the show notes of this episode, vonnetpodcast.com forward slash 189. Uh, find the image with these simple X short links and join our various passing chats there. Uh, the main co- uh, committee correspondence like we have on Telegram uh, is there, as well as a number of sub chats that are dedicated to uh, various technology projects. <clears throat> I will say, though, um, these Im- assemblies do need to be uh, do not need to be restrained to just meetings of our Department of Technology. Um, if there's anything you would like to talk about, um, please do let me know. We, except, I think Chris has some topics on Maybe we'll have a meeting of our Department of Economics and you'll know, go deep into you know economics. I don't know. Um, just an idea. Uh, Dame on SimpleX, Telegram, Signal, uh, or email coordinator at paznia.com. Um, let me get switched over here. So a few final things to mention. Uh, we've been really busy over Liberty, Liberty Type Publications. Uh, there's a new book out, a second edition out of another, uh, and we're in the process of another few uh, that I'm really excited about. So I guess first off, um, I'll mention our Eight Faces bundle. Um, Eight Faces of the Goddess, Cannabis and the Divine Feminine, and Eight Faces of the Dragon, Coca and the Divine Masculine, which is our newest release. Um, those books are now available via bundle um, on the Liberty, Liberty Type website. Uh, one of our, uh, another one of our amazing uh, clients and authors, and uh, then Paul Rosenberg's amazing fiction books, uh, A Lodging of Wayfaring Men, and uh, The Breaking. Do- uh, oh gosh, and I was, thought I was screen sharing that on OBS, but I was not. So I'll flip back to the other one real quick. Jesus, it's it's past my bedtime, guys. I should be asleep. Um, so yeah, first one, the, way past uh, the the Eight Faces bundle. And uh, then we've got the the Paul Rosenberg fiction bundle, Lodging of Wayfaring Men, um, plus uh, the uh, plus uh, Breaking Dawn. Um, just uh, yeah, amazing fiction books. Would highly recommend you get them. Um, they're behind me. You know, they're always within reach. Essentially, um, they were major major motivations for a lot of a lot of the second realm stuff that I you know that I think of. Um, you know, proxy merchant lawyers that uh, you know like in the first realm, they're you know. They're spiffy clean, but the stuff that they're doing um, in the second realm is is not. Uh, or, or entrepreneurs are in the same vein. Um, like the, these 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 fictional um, portrayals that really um, um, that really give you the inspiration to come up with these, these ideas in, in physical space and time. Um, you know, in the here and now. So I'd highly recommend you you check it out. LibertyAttack.com forward slash Paul um, is where to go for the bundle, which really is the LA Publications exclusive. I don't think, I don't think you can get the bundle on Amazon, but you can get each of these books on Amazon. Um, go ahead and buy the bundle from us. And you can do it with Bitcoin. Um, Amazon does not accept Bitcoin. Um, thankfully, at least not yet. Um, and lastly, I'll mention the Pasnia Farms. Uh, um, there's a Pasnia Farms category on the LA Publications... Excuse me. On the LA Publications website, we now have... Uh, canned goods by Aura, uh, cowboy candy, salsa, salsa verde, dill pickles, dill relish, and more, uh, made with the highest quality ingredients, uh, most grown here at Veritas. Obviously we'd much rather just, you know, um, you know, deal with these things in person, but, um, not everyone comes out here to Veritas. Uh, so we will make those available for, uh, general consumption. Um, anyway, I think that's all for now. Uh, but of course, if you're in the market for ghost phones, Calix OS, um, or Graphene OS, uh, or Ghost Pads, we do offer those too, uh, courtesy of our, our brother Jamin here. Um, LibertyAttack.com forward slash privacy tools is the link for any of those. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much for being here, and uh, cheers from the Pre-Republic of Pasnia. Uh, until next time, see you guys.